Welcome to 5-1 at Home, the place where you will always belong. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. And speaking of weekends, last weekend we had our Alpha Weekend, which was so good. I had such a good time. And for those of you guys who were able to join us either virtually or in person, uh, I know I speak for all of the other leaders when I say just how much fun it was to be able to speak, uh, to be able to spend some extra time with you. Now, for those of you guys who weren't able to join us, uh, there's always going to be more events in the future, so we hope you can join us then. And if you didn't even know about Alpha Weekend, uh, either you've been living under a rock or you're new. So if you are new, we would love to get connected with you. There is a link for you in the description right at the top. You can click on it and fill that out. And we want you to be able to fully experience all that our ministry has, especially the good news of Jesus. So how can they know if they don't know? So for all of you guys, whether you're new or older, uh, take a moment and share this link. Copy it and paste it into a message or a chat and welcome them in as well. Invite them in to join you and watch this right now. Uh, if you missed some of the announcements in the beginning of this, here they are again. First is Together We Worship is all this month. Check out the video in the description for more info. And then second is Grad Sunday is June 6th. This is our next event coming up. Do not miss it. We are celebrating and honoring our eighth graders and our seniors. And we're also welcoming the upcoming new sixth grade students into the ministry. Great stuff. It's gonna be in person and online, right? So combination. Uh, with that, it is time for us to now go into our worship time. So would you guys, uh, extend your hands, fold your hands, close your eyes, lift up your head, bow your head. Either way, would you join me in prayer? Father, we come before you and Lord, we ask that you would calm our hearts right now. Lord, with whatever other stuff is going on in our lives, would you help us to just focus right now? Help us to push out all of the things that are giving us anxiety and distracting us and uh, help us to just focus on you, to be calm and present and to sing and worship and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
All right, we are back with week three of our series, Waitlisted. Now, we're gonna play a little game of have you ever, okay? So, uh, first question is, have you ever been told you talk too much? All right, let us know in the chat or in your groups. For those of you who are right now in our one of our Discord channels or if you're on Zoom or Google Hangouts, uh, in your groups, let, let talk amongst yourselves. Have you ever been told you talk too much? Have you ever been listening to somebody tell a story or uh, make a point about something and realize that you haven't been paying attention uh, for the last couple minutes and uh, all of a sudden they ask you to double check to make sure that you are listening and you get caught. All right, next question. Have you ever been trying to tell a joke in your friend group and you go to tell your punchline and you realize nobody was even listening to you tell your joke? And so you start to tell it again, but then you just give up because no one, no one was gonna hear you tell it anyways. We all want to be listened to, right? Nobody likes it when you're trying to tell something to somebody, you're trying to communicate something and you realize that the people around you aren't even paying attention. That's one of the most frustrating things when you are saying something but nobody is listening. It's so frustrating, right? And I know this, I feel like, better than a lot of people because I'm somebody who talks a lot, right? And some of you guys are at home right now nodding your heads going, yeah, Pastor Christopher talks a lot. Every time he talks to me on Sunday morning, I'm like, this guy talks a lot, right? I know, I get it, you don't have to, this is, a, you don't have to tell me, I'm very aware, I talk a lot, all right? I enjoy talking, I'm okay with it, I'm not offended, um, but the reality is, our voices matter. Our voices matter. In fact, this is one of the things that is so prevalent right now in our cultural moment is this idea that people's voices need to be elevated, that for too long, certain voices have been put down and have not been heard by the larger society that certain voices have been heard and other voices have not been heard. And that's really frustrating when not just an individual, but even a whole community feels like their voices can't be heard. There's nothing more frustrating than feeling like you don't have somebody who can hear you when no one is listening. And it's especially true in difficult moments. Right, it's one thing if you're just trying to tell a joke to your friends and no one cares enough to pay attention, but it's an entirely different thing when you're going through something, when you're struggling with something and you feel like nobody is paying any attention, when you're frustrated, when you're confused, when you're afraid, when you are feeling attacked, when maybe you're feeling like um, when, uh, when you're being assaulted or there's some sort of oppression against you. I know that some of you guys have talked about when you feel like, uh, like a teacher or the administrators at your school are not listening to you, they're not hearing your voices and how frustrating that can feel when you as a student feel like you don't have a voice. Today we're gonna to talk about listening and being heard. 
listening and being heard, especially during difficult moments. You know, I remember there was a time when it was hard for me to believe that God was listening. I was going through a lot, and, and this was a time when I was in college, and I was struggling to really believe whether or not God was even there. There was so much going on in my life, and I was struggling with my friendships, and all of my friends at this point, when, when I was in college, had all of my best friends had gone away, and so I have friends that are up north and friends that have moved out of state, and so all of my friendships are are, are, are changing and I'm struggling to find new friends at my school, at the college that I was attending. There was just all kinds of changes in, uh, and, and, and I didn't know what to do with things and, and, and I was struggling with, um, with myself and my own emotions and, and feeling like I was going through a season of depression and I was calling out to God and I was wondering if God was even listening. And I was really struggling with the idea of like, does God even exist? And God, if you do exist, do you even hear me? At night, as I lay in bed, who else do I have to turn to other than God? And so I would pray to God and I would talk to God and I would ask God all kinds of questions. And it felt like at times I was just laying there talking to myself. But for some reason, I, I just had something in me that just kept calling out to God. God was the only person who could really listen to me and hear me in everything that I had to say. You know, whether it's because you're wrestling with doubt or whether it's because you're going through some kind of personal tragedy, sometimes you wonder, is God really listening to me? Does my voice really matter? We're gonna look at a, a, a person in the scriptures who was right there with us in those questions. And so you know him as King David, and I'm sure you guys all know the story of David and Goliath, right? David and Goliath, the small uh, guy who takes out a sling and he slays the giant, this man of great faith. But David really went through a lot of hardship in his life, and David got weightlisted. Okay, so when David was a boy still, he was a shepherd. And that's when Samuel the prophet was led by God to come and anoint David as king. He was anointed with oil, which was this ancient uh, Hebrew symbol of, um, of being chosen by God. Awesome promise, right? Well, he wouldn't be king for a long time, so he's anointed with oil, but right then he's already waitlisted. This is the story that we know of as David and Goliath, and Saul's armies are in fear of Goliath as Goliath comes to challenge the, a great warrior of Israel. And so uh, if one person comes out to fight Goliath, instead of all of the armies having to do battle, only one person would have to die. So instead of having everybody do battle and having lots of blood uh, be shed, uh, all Israel had to do was send out one person. But too many people were afraid to go out and fight Goliath. And so you guys know the story for the most part. Everyone was too afraid, but David stood up to fight Goliath knowing that his God would be with him. And so trusting God, he went out to fight Goliath and defeated him. And King Saul is so impressed by this young man that he comes and asks him to be in his court. And David's also a talented musician. And so he asks David to play songs for him. But the relationship gets tense because soon God blesses David more and more. And pretty soon, instead of people singing Saul's praises, they're singing David's praises. And pe they, the people would start singing about Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his tens of thousands. And Saul starts to get really, really jealous of David. And so things got so bad that eventually David had to flee for his life 
from the kingdom while Saul and his army hunted David down. He went from being God's person who was anointed to be king, God's chosen servant, to now being a refugee. He's now an outlaw running from the king. And so it's this huge, long, dramatic story. It really needs to be this epic movie. Uh, and you can read all about it in 1 Samuel, which is one of the books in the Old Testament. Um, but we can fast forward to God's promise being fulfilled to make David king. So eventually, uh, Saul dies in battle. David refuses to kill Saul. In fact, he has multiple chances to kill Saul, but he refuses to touch Saul at all because he honors God's uh, anointed um, as king. That whole time, David never stopped talking to God. He never stopped talking to God. He never stopped trusting in God and placing his faith in God. And like we talked about before, faith and, 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 and trusting in God doesn't have anything to do with how you feel. It's more about a decision. It's, it's a decision on who you are going to place your, your trust in. That's what faith is. It's saying, I'm going to put my bets on this person. I'm going to place my security on this person. So when we place our faith in Jesus, we're saying, yes, I trust that Jesus is the one who is responsible for the cleansing of my sin. I'm going to trust that Jesus is the one who is able to do this for me in my life. That doesn't mean I, I never have any doubts. It means that my trust that Jesus is able to do what he says is going to be greater than my doubts. Okay, so Psalm 57, one. Now, the, for those of you who don't know this, the, the book of Psalms, these are mostly all, these are songs. That's what a Psalm is. It's, these were all composed to be sung and most of them with instruments. And you can even see that at the top of the heading here. Okay, so Psalm 57, it says, it starts out with, to the choir master, okay? This is made to be a song, and David wrote tons of songs. He was a poet, he was an artist. According to Do Not Destroy, a miktam of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave, he says this, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful for, to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge. Till the storms of destruction pass by, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid fiery beasts, the children of man whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongue are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. See, this is, it's a song, but it's also a prayer. David is talking to God. He's praying to God and he's singing to God. This is the way that David communicated to God and, and, and conveyed his emotions. You know, it's like when there's, when there's some ways that you, you can't express how you feel, but there's like certain artists or songs and we can just go, man, this is, this is what I'm feeling. And so David writes this out when this is about the time when he's fleeing from Saul. Saul's trying to kill him. And David turns to God. Are you waiting for a prayer to be answered? Do you feel like you're surrounded by enemies, as David says here? Do you feel like you need help, some guidance about what your next step should be in whatever circumstance that you're in? Do you feel like you're all alone, overwhelmed, afraid? Man, this is a psalm for you. Are you discouraged? Or you feel like you're at the end of your rope, like David felt here. This is a psalm for you.
God never stops listening. So what we need to do is we need to just keep talking. Just keep talking. That's what David did. Throughout all of the highs and the deep, deep lows, he kept on singing and praying and talking. Psalm 66, in verses 16 through 20. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. God is still listening. He's always listening, even when nobody else is listening to you. When it feels like your voice doesn't matter to the people around you, God is listening. His ear is open to you. Psalm 116, one through six says this, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. He has heard my voice because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol, it's like the, the, the pains of death laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. You know, in Psalm 116 here, God, David said God's ears were turned toward us when we pray. So here are two things you can do when you've got God's ear. Okay, two things you can do when you have God's ear. First, God knows exactly what you're going through right now, but that doesn't mean that God still doesn't want you to talk to him about it. God has made us for relationship. He wants you to share with him. I, I, I know, like for me personally, there are times when it feels like, what's the point of me saying things that God already knows? But part of being in a relationship means that I have to open my mouth and share and talk. So share, open your mouth, be honest and open and vulnerable and raw. Second, share your feelings. This is my favorite part of the Psalms is how honest they are. David in his Psalms would pour out his heart. Man, some of the emotions that David would share are just so raw and honest. He would get real with God when he was being waitlisted out for like 15 years on the run. David would get real with God. So what God wants you to do and what the Psalms emulate for us is that we're actually just supposed to be honest about what they are. We're supposed to share what they are with God. God wants you to just speak your mind. So in the time we have left, here's what I want you to do. I wanna encourage you to take some time just right now to act on the things that we've just talked about. I want you to just in, in the, in your, in your mind and in your heart, take some time right now to pray. Whatever's on your heart, maybe God has been bringing something, some issue up um, to your mind as we've been talking, and you know that this is something that uh, you need to talk to God about. Can you just open that conversation up with God right now? Open that conversation up with God right now.
While David waited on God, God never stopped listening. And David never stopped praying. So let's keep praying too. Remember, while we're waiting, God is listening too. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the story of David and how David has shown us what it means to wait and what it means to to talk and how you listen. God, we pray that you would help us to keep trusting in you, to to, to keep listening for your voice as we pray. And Lord, that we would hear from you as you, hear, as you listen to us and respond. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well guys, right now we are going to head on over to Zoom and continue this week's Alpha. Uh, in the chat, let us know, have you ever been told, have you, uh, that, uh, you, ev- have you ever been told you talk too much. Some of you guys at home right now were like nodding your heads is like nodding. Your... Let's try that again. Remember, God never stops listening. So let's never stop talking. Let's pray. Oh, shoot, never mind. Let's redo that. <laughs>